Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin DeLong. I am the founder of Cyber Social Hub. What Cyber Social Hub is is just a community of digital investigators that help each other out looking for some answers, maybe tips and tricks of how to do certain things, anywhere from digital forensics, OSINT, cybersecurity. Um, if you're in those fields, come on in and uh, we can help you out at cybersocialhub.com. What I'm going to show you today is if you're doing an investigation about someone or can, involving someone on social media and say you're looking for their social accounts, just maybe a little bit of an online presence. Now, there's better tools out there. There's a bunch of professional tools that will do this job a lot better. This is, say, if you're on a very limited budget and you're looking for some free tools to do this, uh, this is the way to go. Uh, the project is is called Sherlock. Now, let me show this to you here. Um, it's on GitHub, of course. That's one of my favorite places to go. There's some uh, phenomenal creators on here if you've not used GitHub before. Um, and the URL is just GitHub uh, Sherlock dash project Sherlock. And you can search for that. I'll also include the URL here, which is rather long in the description. So here is a copy of the Git right down here. Um, and don't have to worry about all this other nerd stuff. And this is just a little GIF, which I thought was cute that they, uh, they actually created for it. Installation is literally three steps to get this thing going. Now we're using, as most of you probably recognize, this environment is Kali Linux. It's a free distribution. Um, I really like Kali Linux uh, just for this types of, of projects and these, uh, and these quick things to go at it. This is just a default installation of Kali Linux, so nothing special here. Uh, and there's a ton of tutorials out there on how to get this. I'm running this myself in VirtualBox. Um, I, I recommend running it in a VM opposed to natively on a, a machine. Uh, entirely up to you, though, how you want to do it. Um, and that's just my preferences. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and install this thing. Really simple. Right here. I'm going to copy this right here. It just says clone the repo, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to copy this, right-click, and copy. And then I'm going to open up a terminal window, which I already have one open, but you can open a fresh one right there by using that. And I'm going to come right here and you can see it's very default installation. I'm going to right click this and I am going to paste the selection. It's going to make some funky colors, but anyway, hit, hit uh, enter and away it goes. So as you can see, it went through that really quickly. And if I type LS right here, now you can see that it created a uh, clone of the GitHub right there of the Git. So there it is in Sherlock. So I'm going to change directories and you can do that by CD and going into Sherlock. Let me get my mouse out of the way here. Sherlock and hitting return or enter, uh, depending on whether you're a Mac or a Windows user. Um, so there we go. As you can tell, I'm on a Mac, so I'll say return and same thing as enter. So now that we're in there, I'm going to go LS and, and look inside this thing. So you can see already that there is a lot of stuff in here. I highly recommend this to make sure you're using this for the powers of good and not evil. There is my disclaimer uh, for that. Um, make sure you're using this for the powers of good or your investigation um, as you go through here. Now, I'm going to talk about the finishing up this installation, and we're going to talk about a few of these other things that are in here. But uh, Python, folks, you probably see it already. Yep, there is a requirements right here. So what this is is just a list of stuff that needs installed in addition to what we just did to make this thing work on a system. Now, for those of you who watched my other videos, no, I don't like to work in a dirty or a dirty up my, my environment. So I like to create a virtual environment for literally everything that I do. Um, and that way it just keeps it nice and clean. I would highly recommend just installing, installing virtual environment. Um, it, it's, it's really quick, really easy to install. I'll provide a link to it. It's a lot easier than even this. So I'm going to create a new virtual environment. Now that I'm inside my Sherlock folder, as you can see here, then you can go ahead and do this. So I'm going to just type the word virtual. Oop, let me get my, uh, my mouse out of the way. Virtual, and it's ENV virtual environment, and then we have to space and then name the environment. We can call it whatever we want, um, but I'm just gonna call mine VENV out of habit sake so I know what's in that folder because it is gonna create a folder inside of here. If, if say we wanted to create a virtual environment just for Sherlock and we named it Sherlock, it's gonna create a folder called Sherlock and well, we already have one of those. We, we don't wanna do that. So that way, if I open a folder, I know there's a virtual environment already for the for this, you can, you can call it whatever you like. That's just uh, what I'm going to call it here. I'm going to hit return here. 
And there it goes, it just does it. So now if I do an LS here and hit this, you're gonna see there is indeed a folder called VENV that I created. <clears throat> so now we just wanna get this thing going. To do this, to get the virtual environment going, now this is for Python, in order to do this, what we wanna do is simply just type this. We need to say, hey, source, and you can see it's gonna auto-complete this for me, uh, V, env slash bin slash activate. That's it. That's all we have to do there and type that command and there you have it. Because if you go inside this folder structure, you'll see there's a, a bin uh, folder in there and then there's a, uh, an executable in there called activate. And all that does is activate your virtual environment. And you know you're activated when you see your folder name here. Now this won't be the same for everyone depending if you named it e uh, v e n v or not, um, it, it could be it could be different. So that's it. You're installed and you're ready to go. It's really that simple. Not challenging at all. Now to uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. There's one more step that we need to do because now that we have the virtual environment installed, I almost forgot this, which is really kind of important. I talked about the requirements, so let's go ahead and install these requirements. To do that, I'm going to flip back to our installation, because we've already changed directories here. Now we added an extra step in here when we did the installing the virtual environment, but now we need to install all the uh, requirements from the requirements.txt. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go back to my command line. Very, very simple here. And I am going to paste the selection and hit enter or return. And there it runs. And it's going to just run through this really quickly and install all the dependencies and all the requirements um, that you do it uh, that you do need. Again, um, real simple. I've I've checked this one out. It, it seems to be pretty safe and okay. But again, that's why I like to do these in virtual environments in case something's being installed. I don't necessarily like. I don't have to run that again. Uh, but make sure you're reading your uh, requirements text file to make sure it's all good. Should be though. No problems. Okay. With that, now. We are absolutely installed and we need to start looking at uh, our target, right? Who are we going to uh, investigate? Who is uh, the subject of our investigation? Um, and it does this by username, right? So I'm gonna go Python three and I am going to then say, all right, I'm gonna go Sherlock and dash dash help because I wanna show you something prior to getting this going. This is going to show us all of the options and things that we have. We can run the version, run it into the verbose mode, which um, you know you, you can absolutely do. You can also pick a folder output for the uh, particular uh, investigation that you're doing. You can absolutely do that. If you're checking out Tor or going over Tor, it does increase some runtime. So note this, but you can absolutely do this just have tour going unique tour i'm not going to get into all of these i have not honestly used the tour yet myself if if you do and and uh, have some information on hey please share with everyone else here down in the comments uh that'd be great i do like to use the comma separated values file that way i'm not having to do uh, screen captures or copying data from the screen and bringing it over once it gives us our results so we'll do that. One of the most important things though is this timeout right here. It's the time in seconds to wait for response. So what, what this does is it goes out and asks each one of these sites, hey, is there a profile with this username on it? And by default, it will just set and wait for the response from this site. If the site does not respond, well, it's gonna set there for infinity waiting, right? I think it even says that in here. Yeah, right here. Uh, the default timeout is infinity. We we don't want to wait infinity. I'm going to give it like 10 seconds for this demonstration. Um, I've changed this time a few times, time a few times, but anyway, um, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of difference. Occasionally you get this. If you have like a, an evening to let this run overnight or something like that, you can change the timeout. I would always recommend setting some sort of timeout so you have it. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean now. So we're going to run Python three. Again, I'm going to run Sherlock. And then I'm going to go dash dash uh, timeout. And I'm going to just set this for 10 seconds, 10 seconds. So what it does is it talks to each site for 10 seconds and waits for a response. If that site does not respond within 10 seconds, it moves on. 
Now it's checking a lot of sites and I'll show you that here in just a, uh, just a second. And then thanks to some of you guys who have commented on the last video, I will blur out any private information that I may have or, or be in here. I usually use my own accounts or test accounts, but I guess YouTube may or may not know that they're my and test accounts. So, um, I'm going to blur these things out anyway. So I'm going to put a target username right here. Literally just type the username just as you see it or as it exists. I usually just leave it all lowercase because this doesn't seem to be case sensitive at all. Um, it, 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 I haven't really tested it all that much, but I haven't seen any, any big results with case sensitivity. So I'm going to hit um, return or enter here, and then it's just going to start going. Um, and it's going to start pulling these uh, out. Now you're going to see it's going to come up with the first ones relatively quickly. So it's just going through and asking all of these sites, hey, is there a user with this name on it? Um, and then it will kick back, hey, either yes or no. And then if it's a yes, it's going to provide, as you can see here, the URL to that profile, the URL to that profile. Now, again, I have the timeout set for 10 seconds, but this is still going to take a little bit. So I'm going to pause the video until it's finished. Um, and then we'll come right back. But first, I want to make sure that you know that keep in mind, just because a username, someone's using it, doesn't mean someone else is using it for a different service. So it may not be necessarily the same person. You need to verify that or find that out in your investigation uh, because, you know, there's a lot of Bob Smiths in the world. There's a lot of, you know, threat hunters in the world. There's, I mean, whatever screen name that somebody's using, there's a lot of those. So keep that in mind. Okay, now I'm going to pause and we'll be right back as soon as this thing uh, finishes up. Okay, that didn't take too terribly long, probably about another 10 seconds after I paused the video, it <laughs> went ahead and finished up for me. You can see we got about 47 results out of this and a whole list of URLs, which again, I'm going to blur out uh, the end part of these URLs. Um, in uh, in post just before I, I post this video uh, just to keep YouTube happy and so we don't want to get on their bad side. I'd like to keep making these videos. Uh, they're a lot of fun and just sharing some of this, uh, this information and knowledge out to you guys. And each one of these, obviously a hot link. So you can go and, and check them out um, and uh, you know go and do some mo more investigation to see if that's the same person or not as you go through. Now, I forgot to add the switch to um, export this out to a CSV, but you can just add the dash CSV um, and away you go. What I do want to show you here real quick, and I'm going to do a listing of this, is these are right here removed sites and uh, sites. So what this is, is these all of the sites that it's going to check right here. It's going to check all of these sites right there. And then it's going to also not check these sites. So if you want to see all of the sites that it actually works with and checks, just type cat um, and then type sites. Uh, oops, might help if I finished typing that. Why isn't it going to finish that for me? Oh, because it's sites and not site. There we go. So this is a list right here of all of the sites that it's going to go and reach out and attempt to talk to. It's a lot. I'm still scrolling and I'm still scrolling and still scrolling, but you can go and check this out for yourselves. So I'm going to go back down to the bottom. It is, it's a lot. And then obviously you can also check for all the sites that have been removed. So we're going to go cat and removed sites. Uh, and so we can see that, Hey, here's the sites that's uh, been removed. Um, and you can also uh, see why that has been removed as well. Uh, but Hey, something else I wanted to show you here is if you notice there's a file right here that it does by default, uh, push out a text document of the results from the last one right there. Now, hopefully I'm going to get all these all blurred out properly for you. And so you can just see it just listed really quick, all the URLs for that, that last user that I just went after, um, on there, which showed obviously Instagram, Trello, Twitch, uh, everything else. It listed them all out there. So, and that's it. That is it in a nutshell. How do you Sherlock, um, using Python and a little bit of Kali Linux. Again, if you like this video, like, subscribe to the channel. And if you're an investigator, make sure you join Cyber Social Hub. It's cybersocialhub.com. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.